Tube. This is Cindy Young. I'm Lou Who Stitches and I'm here to make another Floss Tube video. Uh, first of all, I just want to say, wow, you guys are amazing. Um, what a community of people. You're so friendly and the comments on my first video were so gracious and nice and I got thumbs up and I've got subscribers and I'm I really honestly did not think that would happen. I thought, oh, I'll have like 10 people watch it and I might get one thumb up. And anyway, just, I'm a little overwhelmed, not, but not entirely. So anyway, thank you very, very much. And um, I was just, yeah, that was great. Anyway, um, I, and, 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 I got some shout outs um, from people that I really admire, like Priscilla and Chelsea and Homesteading on the Homefront, and um, which led other people to come and view my, uh, just wow, okay, just wow. I'm not gonna keep going on and on, but just wow. <laughs> anyway, but I wanted to do some shout outs of my own because um, I, I, in the process of being a newbie on Face Floss Tube, um, I met some more people who were new and um, some of them, well, these are the people who really their comments resonated with me more than anything. So one is Gulf Coast Stitcher. You need to go check her out. She has opened a shop and I, I haven't purchased anything yet, but I'm going to. Um, but she has an amazing, wonderful selection of patterns in her shop. And I think there was some floss, um, but I just remember I scrolled through all of her patterns. I was looking for one particular pattern, but um, I was looking for Ira and Ida Crow. Ira, I can't remember their last names. And it's the Good house, Housewife, Good Housewife. Um, anyway, those patterns. She doesn't have those two in her shop, um, but I love the way she says those names because she showed them on one of her, her floss tube videos. And, and she's from the South and I just, I thought that was really nice. <laughs> anyway, um, but she has an amazing selection and you should go check it out. So, and I will um, endeavor to link people below that I mentioned today. Um, I, I do okay technologically, but sometimes it's, it's a stretch, <laughs> just gonna say. Adelaide call it, Adelaide, Adelaide, cottage um she's new to floss too but she's been doing all kinds of other um crafting videos and um really just amazing um also trixie stitches who um <laughs> it turns out she knows uh exactly where kelsey's uh needlework crafts is no kelsey's needle crafts in placerville california is and um, Trixie, that was kind of fun to have that connection. And then also Stitchy Witch 42, who is up in Oregon and said hello to me too as well. Um, so I had a couple corrections. First of all, I said my favorite book was by Elizabeth Elliot and I called it Discipleship. It's Discipline. It's called Discipline. Hold on a second. Here it is. This is the book that I was talking about. Um, the Glad Surrender. Maybe because of that subtitle, I called it Discipleship instead of Discipline, because surrender is difficult, and it's not a popular thing that we want to do in our culture, is surrender to anyone, <laughs> let alone God. So um, also, it's Flannel Jammy's Farm, and I said Flannel Farm Girl or something like that. It's Flannel Jammy's Farm, so go check her out. Um, also, I do have two friends that I know of for sure. I I'm sorry, my hair, it's time for a haircut and I can see myself as I'm talking to you and I'm just like, my hair, it's so flat, it's not doing anything. I'm having a bad hair day. Um, anyway, uh, oh, I do have two friends who actually I know for sure cross-stitch and um, that's so I do have friends that cross stitch. It's just that we don't tend to gather together and we don't have an LNS that brings us together. And 
it's a little deserty out here on the West Coast, I'm just saying, for some of us. Um, okay, also, I wanted to talk about this quilt behind me. Right here. <laughs> so last week I mentioned, or last time I mentioned, that I got a tongue lashing from my mom because I have it hanging in, on the wall of my living room. I'm in my living room today. And... Um, and she had just gone to QuiltCon down in um, Anaheim, California with my sister in February. And they had gone to a class on quilt preservation. And um, this quilt is, we know for sure, this is an heirloom quilt from my husband's side of the family. It was uh, quilted, I believe, by his great maternal grandmother and you know pieced and put together by her and um when his parents passed away there were several quilts in my mother-in-law's um closet and each of the kids got one of the quilts and my sister-in-law knows how much i like blue and white do you notice how color coordinated i am today just saying um knows how much i like blue and white and she, this is the one that i got but i love this hold on a second See this cute little guy? I'm sorry for the reflection. That's my husband when he was a little guy. Do you see the quilt? Do you see the quilt that he's on the bed on? It's that quilt right there. So that was part the other reason we got this quilt because we had this little picture of my, my cute husband. Isn't he adorable? Isn't he just the most adorable kid? Um, he's a pretty adorable guy too. Anyway, uh, so, and I've had it, I have, this wall is uh, probably 15 feet long and blank, just blank. And so I have a lot of space I need to cover with something. And so when I got it, I was like, yay, I have something to hang up on my wall. Well, my mom's like, oh my gosh, you need to get it off the wall. You need to... Um, preserve it. That's an heirloom quilt. You need to take care of it. <laughs> and so I promptly looked at the quilters in my family and I said, fine, I need a replacement. Thank you. Um, but she is correct. So sun and air are hard on fibers and the older the fibers get, the more that sun and air are hard on them. And she gave me all the <laughs> stuff all the reasons why, and I'm sure some a lot of you know why, um, but uh, I, I can't remember what she said. So this is the quilt I got the tongue lashing about. <laughs> anyway, oh, I also wanted to mention, I'm sorry, a little scatterbrain, Michelle Bendy Stitching, Miss Michelle Bendy Stitchy, Michelle at Bendy Stitchy. She gave me a shout out, and I wanted to give her a shout out. Or she commented, anyway. Go see, go see Michelle. Um, okay, so um, one thing I noticed in my video last time was I did a lot of talking just like this and I didn't show you much. And so I have a ton of stuff. And I'm gonna start out with some just pretties that I've acquired in the last um, couple weeks and, and yesterday. Okay, so first of all, last time I was in Placerville, I went, we were just, hanging around downtown. So Placerville, something you need to know about Placerville and the town I live in, I, these are gold rush towns. And Placerville is just like 15 miles from uh, Sutter's Mill um, on the American River. And so um, did you ever see Paint Your Wagon with Clint Eastwood? Um, that's the town <laughs> that is my high school did a production of Painted Wagon. I didn't even make it halfway through. My friend and I left. It was so boring. And then I tried to watch the movie. It's not a very interesting musical. But um, Placerville, uh, sometimes called Old Hangtown, it is the center of where the gold rush started. So um, anyway, it has this amazing downtown area um, that it... it fluxes in how well it's doing economically and how many stores but right now it's full of stores and um, it's on highway 50 on your way up to south lake tahoe so 
if you are if you ever go up to South Lake Tahoe on Highway 50 just it's not hard to make a detour because there's three stoplights you have to go through in order to keep going to South Lake Tahoe. So you can just kind of divert and go through the downtown and it's just adorable. Anyway, cute shop downtown. They kind of do vintage clothing and she had these um, flower sack towels in there. And of course I loved the butterfly one, really pretty. But then I turned it over and I'm looking at, <laughs> I'm looking at the, their linen towels. Are they linen or are they cotton? No, they're 100% cotton, sorry. But they're even weave. I don't know, I don't know if you can see that, but they're even weave. And immediately, I'd just been in Kelsey's across the street. Immediately, I'm like, I could stitch on these. I could do it. I could find a pattern. I could make up a pattern and stitch on these. What the heck? Anyway, okay. So cute, cute. My garden journal by Lisa Audit. Anyway, cute. Okay, yesterday I had a doctor's appointment, the yearly one, um, and so I had to go up to that town north of me that I shop at regularly in Oregon, which is awesome because no sales tax. Um, but I went to Target and I went through the dollar section, which in our Target is like, like 12 by 12. I'm serious. We have the smallest dollar section of any Target I've ever been in. I don't understand, but we do. Um, but, oh my gosh, five bucks. Are you kidding me? It was the last scalloped pink one. I kind of have a thing for scallops. I'm just going to tell you right now. It was the last pink one, but look, five dollars. Then, <coughs> Look at these cute pots in one of my favorite colors. See how it matches my decor? $3 each. Oh, I took the tax off of those. <laughs> I think I'm actually going to use them like pencil holders or something like that. Anyway, I love screaming deals like that. <laughs> it makes me so happy when they're really pretty. They aren't junky. Awesome. Okay, now I want to get into um, some of the stuff. Uh, cross stitch related that I've gotten recently. So yesterday, I also went to Barnes and Noble. We did go to Costco. That's like, okay, let's go to Costco and get it over with and get gas because it's like 60 cents cheaper to get gas in Oregon than it is to buy gas in California. Um, anyway, but I went to Barnes and Noble and I don't buy these regularly because they're, they're like $13 a piece. Anyway, but I got this. I also get, I, I will sometimes buy the, um, off the app, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I hope you do. Anyway, and of course it came with this cute little, um, well, it's a bookmark and a card kit in here. The only thing I have, I don't do a lot of kits and partly it's because I have to figure out what threads they mean. So I started to do one kit not long ago and I totally, the colors of some of the threads were so close, I screwed it up. So I put it down and there it sits. Anyway, so that's why I don't do a lot of kits, but I might do this one, it's cute. Um, and of course I, I like these. I um, I really bought it for the one on the cover, the little bunnies. Aren't they adorable? Anyway, cuteness. Lots and lots of cuteness. Okay, so now, um, I think I mentioned before, I'm newly back to um, cross-stitching and just in the last three years, and I haven't acquired a lot of stuff. I'm sorry. Okay, I'll, I'll quit. Um, but, I've started just a little bit, like when I go to Kelsey's or whatever, um, and of course now on one, two, three stitch, and then oh, I'll get to another one just in a minute. Um, so um, last, oh, the other um, LNS I mentioned before is an hour and a half north of me. Of course, I dropped something, um, and she's called uniquely yours 
and her name is Lee, so it's unique Lee, yours, and she's in Grants Pass, Oregon. Um, anyway, so I, um, for my husband and I, it's a, it's a quick getaway. We feel like we're far enough away. So we went up there last fall for our kind of our anniversary weekend. And, um, one of the things I got was this from Hands on Design. Hey there, pumpkin. And I liked it because I had seen someone else and I'm sorry, I don't remember who, um, on Instagram stitch it on kind of a turquoise fabric. And I loved it. And I love pumpkins. So um, anyway, so I picked this up. And it's really, you know, there's not a lot. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not supposed to do that. Oh, I better edit that. I'll edit that out. <laughs> Oops, I totally forgot. <sighs> Forgive me. Um, anyway, it has uh, Weeks Dye Works and Gentle Arts threads. I'm sorry. Anyway, the other hands-on design that I've gotten, but I got this through one, I think I got, no, one, two, three stitch? No, I got it from Down, down Some Chain Lane, but it's been a while, is the Let It Snow Bungalow from the Chalk for the Home series. Right, so I should, I need to be really careful. I'm like, still like trying to, get over the fact that I screwed that up. <laughs> anyway, um, and then also from Uniquely Yours last fall, I got this Lizzie Kate um, fall square, just a little snip, snippet. It's just cute. I thought that would be cute to have something small to hang up or, um, I don't have a dough bowl, but I have lots of um, uh, milk glass. So maybe I'll make a little milk glass dish or something like that. Um, another fall item that I just found in my stash of stuff that I don't even know when I bought it, but I'm pretty sure, I know I bought it at Kelsey's, was this JW, JBW Designs Alphabet Pumpkin. And it's just really cute, and it calls for, um, see how good I'm being now? Calls for sampler threads, but it does give uh, Weeks Dye Works conversions and also DMC conversions. That's pretty cool. I think I would um, definitely do an overdyed thread because I like how it um, is sort of like variegated there. Anyway, um, okay, so continuing on with the stitch acquisitions, <laughs> stitch acquisitions, um, I got this through. Oh, I got it through ABC Stitch um, last fall, and I immediately kitted it up, obviously, with the intention of stitching it, but I haven't finished the September one yet, so that's probably why I haven't started this one yet. But I like the fabric. Um, the fabric that came with the um, September one was a Jobelin and it's just like really flat. It doesn't have a lot of dimension to it. Um, it's nice to stitch on, but I think the fabric's kind of plain. I'm going to finish it, but, um, I really like the fabric on, I don't know. Is that, can you see that? I just think that's so pretty. It's really, really pretty. Anyway, um, I, and then I got this, I got this at Uniquely Yours. You can see her little tag there. And because it's a church, and I don't know that I will do the whole, um, what is this series? I can't think. Hometown Holidays series. I don't think I'll do the whole series, but I really like this one. And probably because um, something I didn't tell you about before is I'm a pastor's kid. So I grew up in the church, and Christmas was a very special time in the church I grew up in um, that my dad was at when I was a kid. And um, anyway, I just think that's cute. And it has a little manger scene. Did you see that? A little crutch. Really cute. Um, so I'll do those someday. <laughs> I don't know when. The other thing I got at Uniquely yours was this so I'm talking to the owner and I'm just she's like so what do you like to stitch I said well mostly my own stuff and I told her I was a designer and 
you know, because I'm always trying to figure out what I'm doing with this business that I'm starting. <laughs> anyway, I found this cute, I, she says, so, she says, so what do you do? And I said, well, it's kind of modern, kind of really colorful. And she's like, so steampunk. And I'm like, no, no, no. Because I'm thinking, you know, leather and, you know, steampunk, like brass and, yeah. Anyway, and she's like, oh, so like steampunk. I'm like, no, I don't really like steampunk. So then I'm flipping through patterns and I see this bee. And he's a steampunk bee. <laughs> and I went up and I said, okay, so I said I didn't like steampunk. But I really like this B. So I got the B and I, I got all the called for threads. I almost did it again. Um, which, oh, and it comes with little buttons. Oops, there we go. Little buttons. Look at how tiny those are. I hope I don't lose them. That would be me to lose them. Um, oh, okay. So it's mostly Weeks dye work threads. And, but look at how colorful they are. Um, a lot of you mentioned, um, and I'm going to talk about this, I think, a little more in, in a few minutes, uh, how colorful my designs were and how, um, but I really am totally drawn to color. I'm like a coloring book fanatic. Um, anyway, so there, aren't those cute? I don't know what kind of fabric. I don't, again, not crazy about the fabric on here. But I'll figure something out. But it's cute. Isn't it cute? Cute little bumblebee. All right. Um, and in my quest to stitch on dark linen or dark fabric for um, some of my chalkboard designs, um, I ordered some fabric from 123 Stitch. And it is so hard unless you know exactly what you're going in for and exactly what you want it's hard to order fabric online so i have been stitching that first piece that i showed you last week on black ada and it's killing me and um, i'm gonna get it done because i'm committed but It's hard. I can only stitch it during the day. I can't stitch it in the evening. The light just is not good enough. I have to have daytime stitch light. Um, so anyway, I went on 123 Stitch and I thought, okay, I'm gonna find some not quite black linen. Well, I couldn't, it, it's hard to tell on a computer exactly what you're looking at. So I ordered two pieces of Lugana. And the first one was this. Oh, this is one of those situations where you're supposed to have like something behind the item. All right, so maybe I got the piece of paper here. Maybe that helps. I don't know. Does can you see that? Anyway, but I like it. It's modeled. It makes me think of a blackboard. Um, but I wasn't when I ordered it. I wasn't sure how dark it was, how gray it was, how black it was. It was really hard to see. So along with it, I ordered this piece because also I couldn't tell for sure. Was this gray on the, on the screen, on the computer screen? I couldn't tell if it was gray, but it's really kind of a ruddy brown color. It really is barn, like old barn paint red. Not, and it's not red, it's brown. I don't know. But it's got nice modeling to it, and um, I'll have to figure out something to stitch on it. I don't um, stitch on a lot of dark uh, fabrics, so this is kind of new territory for me. Um, but anyway, so that was another. Uh, when did I order that? Let's look. Uh, date says no date. Oh, February 28th. That's when I ordered it. Okay. So fabric. Okay, so on to some other things <laughs> that I've gotten recently um, or that I want to talk to about today um, was I just got this book in the mail, The Complete Ketogenic Diet for Beginners. So this last weekend I was at a um, training um, and I got to talking to a friend of mine and she's like, oh yeah, I'm doing this ketogenic diet. I'm not hungry at all, but I'm eating like tons of fat. <laughs> 
I'm like, what the heck are you doing? And so she got to talking about it with me and explaining it to me. And I thought, well, maybe that's something I could do. So I have some health issues I'm dealing with right now. Not, nothing real serious, but um, I need to take a little weight off. And I thought, well, maybe I could do this. Because my big turnoff with diets is that I get end up being hungry or I have to eat a lot of foods that don't agree with me or whatever. But <laughs> honestly, fat agrees with me just fine. Um, so I thought I would read this and give it a try. I'm not going to go into it. I'm going to go into it carefully. And I think it might be good for my husband as well. So it would be something we could do together. And it was um, under $10. I got it on Amazon. So the Complete Ketogenic Diet for Beginners by Amy Ramos. So I'll tell you what I do. I don't know if I'm going to do it, but we'll see. Now the um, other thing I'm, um, I mentioned last week that we had adopted our, or last time, because it wasn't really last week, <laughs> last time, um, we had adopted our, our um, youngest daughter from Uganda. And there's a lot of stuff um, when you adopt kids from hard places that you have to relearn about parenting. And um, so one of the things that we do, we did last week, we had a simulcast at um, our church um, called Empowered to Connect. And it's training um, in relationship, basically, and a different approach to parenting relationships. And gives you tools, it talks about brain development, they talk about brain development, and um, the people speaking at it are all from um, TCU in Fort Worth, Texas. And so some of them have accents, that's kind of fun. Um, but the passion to um, help kids who are coming out of hard places is just phenomenal. And it's, um, it's, you know, it's our heart as well. My husband and I, it's our heart to do that. And it's what I do in public schools as well. Um, because there's increasingly a lot of kids who are coming out of very, it's not even dysfunctional anymore. It's just hard. It's hard places. So this helps. If you are an adoptive parent and you're struggling, check this out. Go to Show Hope, their website, or go to the TCU website or the Karen Purvis Institute of Child Development website. And you will just Google Empowered to Connect. Okay. Wanted to share that. That's my little um, what is it? PSA, <laughs> public service announcement. Okay, back to stitching and fun. All right, so real quick, um, I wanted to talk about my ancient finishes. And when I say ancient, I'm talking, you know, 27 years ago when I first started stitching. Last week, I mentioned, um, oh, the other thing I wanted to clear up, one of my corrections was I was talking about this magazine, Cross Stitch and Country Crafts. Um, in the late 90s, it was bought by Better Homes and Gardens, whatever their publisher is, and it became Cross Stitch and Needlework magazine. Anyway, so I loved this magazine. And so I still have some of my issues, like that one. Although I was looking through it, and I'm like, why did I save this one? I don't know. I don't, I'm not like save all of them because I just don't have the room. And because I know there's like a lot of patterns I'll never do. So I just, uh, a few years ago, actually I went through and I just saved the ones that I really, really loved and thought I might actually stitch someday. Anyway, okay. So back to my first piece that I was talking about that came out of a Better Homes and Gardens. Um, so I was going to, I just realized, I, you know what, I'm just going to flash this up. So this is a photocopy out of Better Homes and Gardens 1992. No, 91. No, 92. 92. No, I'm sorry. It was 1991. <laughs> I'm trying to remember when we first moved up here. Anyway. Okay. There you go. That was the pattern. It was just a photocopy. I think there was a picture, obviously, but here is the finished piece. How does your garden grow? But it's a really good beginner um, piece. 
to do because you don't have a lot of, I mean, you switch threads, but it's not like you're doing um, shading or anything like that. It's not like a, a heaven and earth designs, that's for sure. Um, but I like it. And so I, I just, my mom, she uh, zigzagged the edges of the fabric for me. And um, it's this is like dark, Charles Craft dark fiddler cloth. And I believe it's 14 count. Um, I'd have to get my ruler out and check. Um, but anyway, so I just hang it like this. I have a old window that I hang it behind and I have a string across it with two little um, little uh, clothespins to hang it up with. You know, crafty clothespins, not like the ones you use outside. So anyway, that, that is like my most ancient finish. And then I, of course, I was so into it, you know, for a while. So I did, I, I remember I stitched this during the 1992 Winter Olympics. I remember sitting, we had just bought our first color television because <laughs> up to then we had a black and white and my husband and I, it was an old hand-me-down, but I stitched this and I'm looking at the back and look at how I carried threads. I, I don't care how people's backs look particularly, but I'm like, wow, <laughs> I really carried some threads. I wasn't going to cut and snip and redo and I was just, and I'm still like that, honestly. Okay. Ah, let's see. And then I did this little guy. I think this is out of a book I will show you sometime. Um, uh, that Better Homes and Gardens put together of different cra uh, Christmas ornaments and and Christmas stitching. Um, I did this when we bought our first home. We had, uh, it was built in the 30s, and we had these two windows on either side of our bathroom sink, and I put lace up, and I was going to do these, you know, uh, things to wrap around it and I was going to do it with th these and so I got one stitched and I never oh that's the back oh there you can see the back anyway I never did get the other one stitched never got made because I got pregnant and then I was sick and then I had the baby and you know you know you know how it goes all right um, and then I have this I don't even this came Oh, here we go. Here. This was a pattern that came with cross stitch and needlework. Okay, obviously I need training on how to show stuff on cross two. Yeah. Anyway, here is the finished piece. And it's supposed to be a bookmark. But <laughs> but this I finished stitching it. I finished stitching it. And then I put it in my drawer. And there you go. So, oh. Okay, so now I want to talk about, oh, last, I'm sorry, last finish was this. So this was the kind of toll painting I did, you can see. And this was actually a frame for stretching canvas over for oil painting that I put together so the edges are really rough. And then I painted it that country blue, I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time. There we go that country blue color and then I painted the roses on it and then I used this Leisure Arts Country Borders to kind of compile a, a little mini sampler. Anyway, and it's been like this forever. I put it on a piece of, I don't know if you can see, a piece of sticky foam or you know, like Priscilla and Chelsea use. And, and then I just covered a piece of cardboard with fabric and stuck it on the back of that. Um, I used to hang it up, and now I just kind of set it on the shelf over my bookshelf over there. Anyway, ancient finish. That actually is fully finished. Okay. So now I want to talk about ancient whips and things that I really would like to get back to. Um, so I started this piece. Uh, probably shortly after my son was born. Let's look at the date on the... This is out of Country Cross, Cross Stitch and Country Crafts, 1992. Um, December 92, if you're wanting to know. So, but I didn't start it right away. I, um, 
I'm trying to think, where were we living when I was stitching this? And I can't remember. I do remember stitching it in our first little house that we had, um, that we bought, which we were owners. So for this piece, this was my first linen piece that I did, that I got. And I noticed today it's got a big old rip there. I don't even know how that happened. So my mother bought me for this, she bought me um, the rods, the um, scroll frame for it. And um, I actually bought a stand not long ago that's still sitting in the box under my desk because I didn't put it together. Okay, so I'm trying to undo these so that I can kind of show you the rest, how far I've gotten. So I, I got all the right, no, I didn't get all the writing done. Um, I thought I'd gotten the heart at the bottom done, but I hadn't. But I got, all, you know, the leaves done, and I got most of the saying done. It says, we thank thee, Lord, for happy hearts, for rain and sunny weather. We thank thee, Lord, for this our food, and that today we are together. Anyway, um, I'd like to get back to this. I still think it's a beautiful piece. And um, so maybe sometime this summer, you know, after school's out and um, I have a little more time to myself, <laughs> maybe then I'll do it. So the piece that I worked on the most over the years was um, this piece. And it was, it's a bit of a compilation, and obviously it's not done yet. Um, it's a compilation piece. This all up here is out of um, the Leisure Arts for the Love of Cross Stitch, and they were originally bookmarks. And But as I was looking at the pattern in the magazine, I thought, gee whiz, they look so cute all together. So I, I just did that. And then my husband's like, you know, we don't have enough scripture in the house. You need to do more scripture. And so I thought, okay, um, this would be cool to put by the front door. So I put, I did this, I charted the verse, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Numbers 6, 24 through 26. And this is supposed to go by the front door. <laughs> I've been working on this probably for 15 years. <laughs> anyway, the bottom portion, oh, see, I charted the alpha, I charted the whole thing right there. Um, this is my own. This is not hard to figure out, so I don't mind showing you. Okay. Um, so I then I had had this Barbara Mock Summer Houses from Dimensions uh, card. And do you guys remember home interiors and people who used to do home interior parties? Well, I had bought a couple of pictures for my home prints that were all very nicely framed that were Barbara Mock prints that kind of went with this whole thing. I still have one hanging in my bathroom because I just like birdhouses. Anyway, I chose to do this little piece, right? This little, that's what's going to go on the bottom of that that I just showed you. See? Right there. That's what I worked on over the years, in the interim years between being really into cross stitch, having children and homeschooling, and then coming back to cross stitch. I'd like to finish that someday. Okay, here's another piece that I literally, all I need to finish is right, whoops, right here. There, that little wreath. That's all I need to finish. And I keep thinking, I need to finish this. I want to give it to my mom because she loves tea. And I want her to know she's just my cup of tea. Anyway, um, but here's the finished piece. They did it on linen in the book. And they have a little charm on it. I don't know. I'll have to find a charm for it. Maybe I'll go to Kelsey's and find one. And um, I did mine. It looks like it's probably 14 count Ada. White. I like Ada. I like linen. I like Ada and I like linen. Okay, so now, this is the funny one. Remember I told you I have, my oldest son is like 
Did I, I don't know if I said he's 22. Um, and when I got pregnant with him, I thought I'm going to do, I'm going to cross stitch my own birth announcement. So I went and bought a piece of linen and excuse the wrinkles and the folds. And I found again in country crafts, or cross stitch in country crafts. I like that goose too. Do you remember when geese were in and everybody had geese in their kitchen? Do you remember that? Anyway, this is from January, February, 93. I wanted to do, I don't know if you can see this. I can't tell what I'm doing. This is what I wanted to stitch. I remember stitching this in the back seat of my father-in-law's extended Ford extended cab, which that was really hard. Oh no, oh no. The needle in it. I don't think it's rusted though. Hallelujah. It's not. That's part of the advantage of living in a, a dry climate. But this is how far I got. I will take that out, I promise. <laughs> anyway, but it's really see through. I don't. Can you see? Oh, where did that piece of paper go? Yeah. Anyway, that's how far I got. In my mind, I say to myself, one of these days, I'm going to finish that, and I'm going to give it to my son. Not right now. Probably when he gets married. Or maybe I'll finish it in time for his first child. He's not even dating anyone right now. <laughs> anyway, those are my ancient whips. And um, I, you know, I need to get back to them. I need to get back to them. Um but now for current whips, because we are at 38 minutes, current whips. So I decided I was going to join the Stitch Along for Bless This Home. This is how far I've gotten because I had to tear out all of this. I had totally messed it up. And so I finally, I got that, re, I got it all torn out and restitched last night. Progress is slow, but we will get there. Okay, so that's, that's for those of you who might not know, this is what the end piece looks like. I'm sorry, I'm not going to take it out because I have all my thread in there. Um, but the Bless Our Home, PC, Bless Our Home. So it's Priscilla and Chelsea, bless, basically it's Priscilla and Chelsea, Bless our home. Sal, you can use the hashtag on Instagram and you can follow the hashtag. So it's hashtag PC bless our home and you can follow it and you can watch everybody else's pro progress. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I'm so impressed with the people that are like, wow, I got it. You know, like they're practically done. I'm still like frogging over here. The frog is visiting. Anyway, the other thing I've been working on and apparently I haven't mended my ways because there's my, I need to get some more needle minders is what I need to do. Um, I've been working on Wilhelmina a little bit at a time. And um, she's just so sweet. I really, I, I have no finishes this year. And it's almost the end of April. We're in the middle of April. And I'm like, dang it, I need to finish something. Preferably something to put in my shop. That would probably be good. But in the meantime, <laughs> I'd like to finish something just for, for me. Um, so there's, here's Wolamina. for those of you. That's from Plum Street Samplers. And the Bless Our Home is from um, Country Cottage Needleworks, just in case you want to know. Now, what I have been working on is, um, I have worked on my chalk design that I showed you last week. I also um, charted uh, the, I charted this and I changed the saying to, I can't remember. I'm totally blanking on it. Oh, wait a minute. Be sweet and bumble. That's what I changed it to. Be sweet and bumble. So it's charted. It's in my computer. Um, I'm going to print it out, and I think I'm going to stitch it on that um, gray Lugana. 
that I showed you earlier. Um, but what I have been working on, because I'd like to um, um, release a pattern before the season that it's for, is I've been working on a piece for Halloween. Now, I'm not a big Halloween person. I don't, it's not my favorite holiday. Um, but I like cute and I like colors. And so this, I hope you can see, it says boo. And I have um, some little figures that I'm going to put down here. And this is going to be a, a gingham border. And I want to get little um, special buttons to put right here. So I have some in my cart and Etsy from some um, button, button people there. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, I know. So, I thought some people mentioned, actually went to my show, store, and I should have written down who you were that said, I went to your store. Um, thank you for going to my store and looking. It was awesome um, to see the traffic there, um, to see people looking. I'm Go ahead and, you know, push the pay button. Put something in your basket. <laughs> Sorry, that's my advertisement. Um, but I wanted to show you some of the things that got mentioned in the comments that people liked um, that are is are in my shop. So uh, way back, I'm trying to find something white here. Way back when I painted, I developed this um, picture of a chicken that I liked, and I decided early on I thought, you know, I'm gonna try and make her. Uh, cross stitch and so there she is lovingly stitched by my mom um, she's I call her Aunt B she's Aunt B in my shop and she has fresh eggs for you and that is not I chose a dark slate gray I can't remember the number off the top of my head for um, her body um, those are French knots however you could totally replace those with just cross stitches if you'd like. And um, her name's Aunt B. And she would love to be a part of your menagerie, whatever that may be. I'm gonna be. <laughs> and it's spelled B-E-A, as in Beatrice, like um, Aunt B on Andy Griffith. <laughs> um, and then the other thing folks mentioned were my Luhu birds. And um, let me show you first. This was the first little design that I came up with besides, um, I'll show you some other time, the design I had designed years ago. And this is Luhu Bird. And there he is in his, his hat and his earmuffs. Um, after him, he decided he needed to go to the beach. So there he is with his inner tube and his flippers. He's a patriotic sort, so here he is in his hat and bow tie. Um, oh, then he likes pumpkins, so here he is in his Stormy Cromer hat and with his pumpkin that he got from the pumpkin patch. And recently he went to Hawaii, and this will probably uh, be in my shop very soon. Um, I'm not going to give you a predicted date because... Um, I'm trying to do stuff around substitute teaching and girls going to dance a half an hour away and um, track and everything else. <laughs> oh, and like trying to keep my house clean and you know stuff like that. But here he is, um, partially stitched by me, partially stitched by my mom. She's my currently she's my um, model stitcher. <laughs> She's awesome. I love my mom. Anyway, uh, so there he's at the beach. So this will be released soon. Um, this one was stitched on 14 count Ada. I, at the older I get, it's like, I like Ada. The holes are really plain. I can see them just fine. Except if you're stitching on black. It's like, oh. And then I had bought this blue Ada for something. And honestly... I kind of want to restitch him on something else. 
I'm not real wild about them. I love, the reason I chose to stitch this pumpkin one on blue is because I love in the fall, the bright blue sky juxtapositioned against, you know, the colorful trees and pumpkins and everything, but it didn't really translate on this. So yeah, anyway. Um, and then these, this one was, uh, I think an 18 count ivory that it was stitched on. And then these two are, um, this is a, actually, this is witch out. No, I'm sorry. These are both Charles Craft, uh, 16 count, uh, Fiddler's Club. And <laughs> sorry, that's my, uh, it's noon. I need to take my medication. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay uh, I think that's it I think that was everything so Luhu Bird can't be oh I know the other one um, people I almost forgot talked about it's my little snow people Merry Christmas they were inspired by a vintage Christmas card and with their little Scotty dog in there anyway um, I had intended this thing that I have them on. It's like a frame thing. And it came with this. Um, <laughs> I'd intended them to be removable. So the top part of them is just a magnet on an old um, canning lid. But it wasn't quite strong enough to keep them up there. And so I'm like, I got to take pictures. <laughs> I got to get this on Etsy. So I glued the bottom and now I can't get it off. So I think this may be a permanent, their permanent home. Um, anyway. Okay, now I think that's everything. Thank you for coming by. Thank you for all your support. Thank you. Just thank you, Floss Tube. You're awesome. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe. Um, I'm either going to do this every two weeks or once a month. Um, I was able to do it, have something to show you, <laughs> um, you know, just two weeks from my first one. But seeing as this is getting to be a 48 minute video, I am going to quit because it's going to take forever to uh upload and um so happy stitching everyone thanks for stopping by mm -hmm.